they're a money printing machine essentially. Fantastic, We can dip, that's a big tick. Hi everyone, so I got a letter the other day from my bank with my new Visa card in it for the bank. So I re realized that I haven't looked at Visa for a while as an investment. So here we are looking at it today. I'm gonna to do a quick valuation of it, just a high level valuation anyway. I'm gonna go through my nine point checklist and then give you my opinion at the end with a buy price. So let's go do it. So Visa is a pretty cool business. It makes money every time one of our cards is being used and I use my card pretty much every day. It's probably got one of the best business moats out there. It's called a toll bridge moat. If you were gonna to talk to Peter Lynch, that's how he would explain it. It's already a $500 billion market cap company. Only probably a few companies compete can compete with Visa in the entire world, obviously MasterCard, Stripe, PayPal. In the uh, Asian communities, we've got Alipay, WeChat Pay, it's probably about it. Maybe Google and Apple can get involved in Amazon, but there's, there's really only a handful of players. It's really hard for a startup company to, to get involved in this space, considering how much uh, reach Visa already has. Pretty much all of us have in our wallets right now, we have a Visa or a MasterCard card, so they have a pretty big toll bridge here. Uh, and look, whether it's online shopping or offline shopping because of pandemic stuff, Visa still wins. So pretty awesome company. So regardless of what we think of the company and how good it actually is, we wanna go have a look at the fundamentals to make sure it actually is a good company. So we start by looking at the revenue growth and we can see that revenue since 2011, it was about 9 billion US dollars a year. In 2011, it's pushed its way up, it's grown, it's more than doubled now to 22 billion. So yep, growth is there for the revenue. Next up is gross margins. And we wanna see gross margins are above 40%. It gives them a bit of, um, flexibility if something goes wrong in their business, they've, they've got some margin um, capacity there. So the higher, the better. And look, Visa is incredible. It's in sort of around about 80%. So they're a money printing machine, essentially. Fantastic, We can dip, that's a big tick. Next up is return on invested capital. Essentially that is how good the business is at um, investing money into the business to grow the business. So the higher this number, the better. I like to look for it to be at least above 10%. Visa has always been above 10%. At the moment, it's in the 20% range, somewhere between 20 and 26%. That's fantastic, uh, a big tick there. Next up is debt. Debt's the number one reason that companies get into trouble. So we wanna make sure they have a good balance sheet. And to do that, we look at the current assets and the long-term assets and compare that against the current and long-term liabilities. So current assets are at 28 billion, current liabilities are only at 14, so they can easily cover their short-term commitments. And look, they've only got $30 billion in total long-term liabilities. $55 billion in long-term assets, plus that 30 billion in short-term assets, they've got this totally under control. That's all we really need to see, another tick here. Next up is free cash flow. Now we wanna see this free cash flow number growing in line with the revenue growth. So revenue did a little bit more than a double in the 10 year period. Free cash flow has gone from 3.5 billion to looks like about 12 billion. So that's quadrupled. So fantastic to see the free cash flow growing like that. Um, yeah, that's a big tick. Free cash flow growth is fantastic. Now the brokerage accounts that I use to buy and sell my shares is Interactive Brokers and Saxo Bank. Interactive Brokers I think is probably the best in the world because they're stable, they have a long history, they give you access to international markets, which is really important for me. They have low fees, but most importantly, like I just said, they're really stable and they've been around for a long time. They've gone through ups and downs before. Not like a lot of these startup companies like Robinhood and Webull and stuff. Been around for a few years now. I don't know how they're gonna handle a financial crisis. So I like to keep my money in somewhere safe and I like to buy my shares through a good platform like Interactive Brokers. Saxo Bank's really good as well. Interactive Brokers I prefer just because the fees are a little lower. Now I have a link in the description for both of these. Interactive Brokers, you can actually go and have a user demo account just to get a feel for the platform to see whether you like it or not. Okay, now back to Visa, we're gonna look now at shares outstanding. Now we want this number to be stable, if not declining. It means um, the value of our shares, there's less in the world that exist, hopefully. Therefore, the value of our um, stake in the business is getting bigger. If this, is, if this number is actually getting bigger, it means we're getting diluted and that's a problem. So the shares have gone from 2.8 billion to now about 2.2 billion over the last 10 years. That's declining, that's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted to see. Okay, the next thing on my checklist is I go have a look at the insider ownership. We want the incentives of the management team aligned with us as shareholders. So Alfred Kelly, the, the, the CEO, the president, the vice chairman, uh, they have, 
the CEO has $33 million worth of shares, but his compensation is 26 million. So if the share price goes down a little bit, he's it's probably not that big of a deal because he gets such a big compensation package. The president he has $15 million in compensation to his $30 million of shares. Again, it's not really a big deal whether the share price goes up or down. I'm actually not happy with this. I like to see about a 10 times um, 10 times the value in sh tied up in shares rather than, than compensation. Therefore, the share price and the performance of the stock is far more important than their compensation. So I'm gonna have to give that across. The next thing I go look for are whether there's any super investors invested in Visa. And look, these guys are a lot smarter than me. So if they've invested in the company, look, it gives me a lot more conviction because they're just smarter than me and they've been doing this for a lot longer than me. So they can pick better, good companies better than I can, I'm sure. So. Let's have a look. It's really a who's who on this list, by the way. So we've got Chris Hone, Chuck Aker. You've got Terry Smith at Fundsmith. You've got oh, Thomas Gaynor, Daniel Loeb, David Tepper, uh, Warren Buffett even. Uh, yeah, this is a pretty impressive list. So look, there's a, there's a big tick here from the gurus. They've, I think a lot of these guys have had uh, stakes in Visa for decades now. So um, it comes as no big surprise. Yeah, uh, we've got to give this a big tick. Now, last but not least is price. Price is obviously the most important thing because regardless of how good this company is, which it is a fantastic company, the price we pay is going to determine whether we get a good return on our investment or not. For example, we're not going to go out and pay, say, $10,000 for the new iPhone. It's probably only worth 800 bucks. So paying $10,000 is silly. It's not a good use of our money. Just like we would with an investment, we need to make sure that we're paying a fair price for it. So to work out this fair price, I use my intrinsic value calculator. It gives me a bit of a ballpark. Look, it's not perfect, but it helps me work out whether this price, the price of the stock is fair enough based on how much money it's making or how much free cash flow it's generating. So I've already gone ahead and put in the numbers in. I've used the growth rates that it's currently growing at, which is around about 10%. It's actually closer to 12% of the last few years. So let's call it 12%. And I'm just gonna assume it slows down a little bit with a bit more increased competition. It's already so big, so I don't know, maybe we'll, let's be aggressive and call it 12 and 10%. So uh, with my huge discount rate of 30%, which I like to use because I aim for 30%, hoping to get maybe a 20% return on my investment. Therefore, I've built in a bit, really strong margin of safety. It says I wanna buy this at about, it's called $30. So the current share price is not even close. We're talking it's like $230 at the moment. And I said $30, that's insane. I'm never gonna get $30. Everyone's gonna say that in the comments. I get it, I totally understand that. This is how I do things. I wanna only find companies where I can get big returns on my money. So I'm gonna be pretty strict with myself here. But to find its fair value, I put in 10% for my discount rate. That's around about what the market will provide and it's around about what Visa will probably get because it's probably gonna go in line with the market. And it says that I'd want to buy this at, with no margin of safety, $140. So at $230, this is overvalued, clearly overvalued. So I really would want to get at least some margin of safety in here. So maybe like 18%, aiming for 15% return on my money with a small margin of safety. I'm only buying this under like under 80 bucks. So look, I, I don't know how, how, to, how to work this out in a different way and how to give this value how to get the valuation anywhere near $230, uh, not possible in my the way I do things. So yeah, severely overvalued in my eyes. So there you have it. My opinion is, it's, look, it's an amazing company with amazing financials. It has a fantastic competitive advantage and there's so many super investors invested in the company, which would give me a lot of conviction if they were buying a lot at the moment, which they're not. Look, so maybe if you're like really confident, $100 might be okay. I don't see, I don't see this being a no brainer at all regardless of how good this company is. So look, this is just my opinion. I'm sure there's gonna be people out there who completely disagree with how I valued the company here and how I've thought about it, and that's totally okay. This is just the way I do things. Please go out and do your own research and prove me completely wrong, and that's cool. I'm happy with that. As long as you've thought about it and gone through the fundamentals, I'm totally okay with it. So look, leave a comment if you'd like to talk about it further, give it a like or a dislike of what you think of the video, and I'll see you next time.